Okay, we've got the tiny pups that come out into the den site. This is Cheyenne, she's our lactating female at the time. And you can see a perfect example there of how to be into what we call the suckling position to allow the pups to be calm and allow her to trust you in their presence. There is nothing more wonderful in this world than being chosen to actually raise the young of a wolf. They are absolutely incredible and their development is phenomenal. Now at this point you'll see that the walls are what we call in and around an area of the den. Now these are what we call in the wolf world circles of development. Circles of development enable the pups to grow steadily through a rate which the adults depict. Yeah, you can draw it, that'd be great. We're just going to do a quick drawing now so we can highlight what we mean. Okay, I was going to draw you now what we call the circles of development. So if you think back to the picture, the den site itself is the first area that she's going to draw. Then, the first circle of development for a young wolf pup, up to the age of about four to five weeks, they will be in and around the den area themselves, and their world is depicted by that. If anything happens, they will go straight back to the den area, underground, where it's nice and safe and dark and contained. However, up to about seven to eight weeks of age, they could be anything from up to a mile and a half to two miles away from the den site itself. They are incredibly quick at developing. And each one of these areas has to be highlighted for its safety zone and its danger. Now we believe that the domestic dog should go through exactly the same things. So, if you imagine a young pup being bought by you guys, taken home, the circles of development will be very, very important. We're going to try and give you an example now. Let's say, for instance, you didn't take into consideration the areas of development, and you took your young pup out at around about 12 to 15 weeks after it's had all of its injections. And let's say, for instance, now you come across an animal that you would have known would have been there if you'd have walked the area, but now because you haven't, it's simply just out of place. The animal comes over and disciplines your pup very harshly. Unfortunately, we will then lose that pup through socialising because we haven't incorporated the circles of development. If we had have done the right thing, we would have known which dogs were good for our pup, which dogs were good role models for our puppy, and educated accordingly. So if I take the front row of people here now, if we go through each one of these people, we could say that every one of these people, despite one, would have a dog that's very, very good for the upbringing and development stages of our puppy. But this young lady at the end has got a very bad dog. She's got a bad dog that's a bit of a bully. So, for that dog to meet our puppy at 12 to 15 weeks would be absolutely disastrous. So, we want to meet all the good dogs first, and we save this dog right till the end, until about the time when our puppy is about six to seven months of age. Once our pup gets to six to seven months of age, what it will then do is develop two words, no and why. Come back to me, no, why. Go over there, no. Why? <laughs> so now we have to prove to the dog why it should come back to us. The reasons why the dog should come back to us is because there's one of the primary rewards on offer, like food, warmth or water, or quite simply because something out in the big bad world has scared her. So we now look to our bad dog. What we do is we have a word with this young lady, five minutes before she's due to come into the park with the dog, and we say to her, we just want you to let your dog off the lead. We've done our homework, we know the dog's not going to be nasty to our pup, but it is going to be a bit of a bully. So we allow our dog to room off, and we start our recall. Come back to me. And our dog, at six to seven months, will start to say, no, why? Now we can prove why you should have come back to me. Because the dog comes out of the trees, turns the dog over, and gives it the shock of its life. You watch the recall after that. You will have to stop it 15 metres before it gets to you, because it will knock you over. It's coming that quick. All we've done is simply explain to the dog using a natural world why it should listen to our decisions. Unfortunately, if we don't do our homework and we don't do our circles of development, like the young pups here, then there's a good chance that we will make the wrong decisions. Wrong decisions in the dog world equate to bad behaviour or more questioning on our behalf. The den site itself is very, very significant. We will come on to this a little bit more as we go through uh, the building of the centre itself. But all I want you to do for a moment is look at the tiny entrance and the dark area that's behind the mother's head at the moment. Remember that for the next few minutes and we will explain why that's very relevant. Okay, Ella, thank you. <coughs> Diet. 
for the wolf. I'm sure nutrition is something that we're all interested in, and in the human world, we all know the same. You are what you eat. In the wolf world, you are exactly what you eat. These animals grow up with the identity that their food provides for them, and every single wolf has an aspect of food that he or she can take to represent their social positioning. For the alphas, uh, we normally find that depending on how the animal's killed, and we will go more into depth than that in a little while, depending on how the animal's killed depends on what they will choose to eat. Most of the time they will go for things like heart, liver, kidneys, and the movement area on the animal. The movement area being muscle area, that area that powers the animal along. Now, there's a very good reason why the dominant animals will choose the movement areas. We believe now, through research, that the wolf is one of the few creatures that doesn't just feed off the nutritional meat of an animal, they actually feed off the chemical emotion of the animal prior to killing us. The best way to describe it to you guys, it's a bit like anyone that's got a domestic cat. Why does a cat that can kill a mouse in 30 seconds decide to play with it for four hours? Is it possibly being cruel or playing a game like we'd love to think as humans? Or just maybe they're bringing up levels of emotions like adrenaline in those animals that saturate the muscles and then when the cat eats it, rather than going out to the back alley every single night on the cat food that you feed him and get him beaten up by five other cats, now the same five cats will run away from him. So the wolves themselves will use chemical, chemical emotion to the animal prior to being killed. The lower ranking animals, as we said before, will eat the stomach content in larger, quanti uh, sorry, larger quantities. We're looking for a mid to high ranking animal for a tester, about 75-25% split. For a mid ranking animal, 50-50. And for a mid to low ranking animal, it will be 75% vegetable matter, 25% meat on average. That's what they will take down. As you can see there now, the battle for survival over food is a little bit uh, unorthodox. You probably recognise this guy over to your left hand side, this chap called Craig Bush. Um, the Lion Man, he's done an awful lot of programs on Sky Television. He's just been down to do a little bit of work with us. Ira and myself are going over to Africa very shortly to work with him with the big cats. <laughs> and we'll see how we go with that one. We're trying in a vain attempt to show that two people that work from very different fields can cooperate with each other and can offer some constructive um, information. Okay, Oz? Thank you. Okay, another little... I'm not sure about the backside being shown. No problem. The conflict between people, as we said before, this is a picture to play with your minds. I could show you a picture today of a mother wolf in a trap and the orphan pups strung up, being shot or gassed or killed by a hunter. And every single person in this room will go, ah, oh, that's cruel, that's terrible, how do we stop it? The other side of that picture is that the wolves in question that have just been killed have been diagnosed with rabies. So it's not as much as an R factor as we think. <coughs> What we're trying to bit, the point that we're trying to make is that in 25 years we've never come any further than demonization or the love of wolves. We don't hate the wolf, we hate what the wolf represents. We don't love the wolf, we love what the wolf represents. So for us now, for young people and for you guys coming into an animal world, we think the best way to portray the animals that we love is to give people the truth about them. Don't demonize them anymore, they don't deserve that reputation. But they're not fluffy creatures that you guys can take home tonight sit them on the sofa and watch television with you. They're a creature that needs and demands our respect. In return, they will give us the same respect back. But firstly, we need to be able to understand them. Understanding, we think and believe, comes from the truth about this magnificent animal. That's why we work with them in the way that we do. We try to show people that we can get close to them. They will respect and love us as family. But they will only do so if you earn that respect. And with the wolf pack, we're only ever as good as the last time that we went in. We also believe that TV work, which we've done a lot of, you can see a gentleman here called Martin Clunes. I don't know whether you have him over in, the, in this country. No? Nobody's seen him before? He's quite big in the UK. He's a um, comedy actor. He came down, very much an animal lover, very much supportive of, of the reintroductions themselves. And we think by getting that high power of publicity on TV, the true account of what a wolf is really all about will do us an awful lot of favours and hopefully will educate children into accepting this animal in the wild. The problem we've actually got at the moment is that we, we think in the UK, which is one of the few places where wolves haven't been released back yet, we're at least two, maybe even three generations away from having that happen. 
Unfortunately, that will be based on what we teach children, and that's why we need stacks and stacks of young people like yourself coming through to educate them about the animal and what it's all 